All right, Orlando, week one, going on the road, first Energy Stadium, what are you expecting that atmosphere to be like? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Um, obviously, this being a, a rival-like matchup, um, a division opponents, uh, two great teams that have been in tough battles. I think they've won, Cleveland's won the majority of the games the last few years. It's going to be very competitive. Um, but we got a very motivated group. We're super excited to get out there. And I think one of the reasons that they added you is because of the Browns' defensive line. Miles Garrett, they added Zadarius Smith, Tomlinson, Ogbo. I mean, what are you expecting? It's almost like they're trying to get as much talent to throw at you guys as possible. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's the NFL, too. You know, that's where a lot of teams have moved, getting and stacking up that defensive line depth because it's so important, especially down the stretch. And they've got a really good uh, front four. Um, they've got great depth players coming off the bench. As you mentioned, Obo, uh, 54 million is a great player. Um, some other young players that they have coming off the sideline as well. And obviously the guys out there are Pro Bowl, all pro level players. So uh, we'll have our hands full. And when you look at Miles Garrett, um, I know he was the most double teamed edge rusher, rusher last year, but he also had 16 sacks. What does that say about his level of talent as an edge rusher, I guess? Yeah, no, he's an elite level, uh, elite talent level player, uh, but his motor as well. You know what I mean? You don't get 16 sacks being the highest double team player and not have a motor. And uh, I think he's got an incredible set of fundamentals based off his uh, athletic ability and body. Um, his his style of play is very unique. Uh, I got the utmost respect for him, but uh, I mean, my, my opinion, man, he's a Hall of Fame level player um, and one of the better players of our generation. So, yeah. And Joe Burrow did tell the media a few minutes ago that he is expecting to play on Sunday. What is, is, are you excited to be able to go out and protect him against the Browns on Sunday? Oh yeah, I'm very excited. You know, I'm happy, happy he's going to be out there so we can get this thing going. Uh, you know, we've got, we got lofty goals and we've got a lot of things that are important to us. And, you know, that's the, that's the head of, of this operation, man. And I'm, I'm excited to suit up with him on Sunday. Yep. Speaking of lofty goals, I've heard a few guys talk about 20 and 0 going 20 and 0. Is that a locker room feel or is that little pockets of groups within the locker room? Yeah, well, that's our feel and that's our mindset. And, you know, I think every NFL team probably comes out with a similar mindset, but it's important for us to get out there and execute. But, you know, that's one of the goals that we set for ourselves is, is being the best team in the world. So. And you mentioned um, Garrett having that high motor. How do you deal with a guy like that? Obviously, you have a high motor, too. You are powerful and as well. But how do you deal with something like that? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm just always on my P's and Q's. You know what I mean? I never try to get caught on my heels uh, playing playing as hard as I can at all times. And that's my mindset no matter who I'm playing because in the NFL, man, so many of these guys on this level are so special, and they're here for a reason. So, uh, But, you know, as I said, man, Miles' combination of talent, athleticism, and motor, I mean, truly special. So. All right, Jonah. I talked to um, Frank Pollock a couple of weeks ago, and he was describing to me, because I've never played the right tackle or the left tackle position, <laughs> but he was just describing for me how difficult it is to make that change. How many hours a week on average would you say did you work to make that change and make it so smoothly? A lot. I mean, it's hard to say hours because it was, it was just something I tried to do every day, sort of even just from a mental perspective, like um, just sort of like imagining myself in that position you know and then I spent a lot of time like I was rehabbing my knee so there was a time where I couldn't do full speed sets and everything like that so like until then I just get in my stance and just hold it and just visualize the play and then once I was able to start taking one step I took one step and then you know eventually worked up to you know by the summer I was going full speed trying to do it every day um, so it's just kind of all around getting used to it and now I'm at a point where it feels really natural to me and I'm not thinking about it anymore how has it felt with the new guys on your offensive line, everyone kind of gelling together as you move forward into the first game of the season? I think we uh, we have a great group. We have a veteran group. Um, you know, we've gotten a lot of reps together. And so I have a really good feeling about it. Like, everyone here has played a lot of football. Um, you know, we, we work well together. And I think that, you know, we're, we're set up in a good position to, you know, have a really good year. And Joe Burrow told the media a few minutes ago that he does expect to play on Sunday. Um, does that energize? You guys probably knew way before then. But does that energize you guys a little bit going into week one? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think we talked about it. I heard Teddy talking about it. I like his analysis saying like all of camp we're trying to build this race car you know and you know we, Jake did a great job all of our quarterbacks did a great job so you know we, we were driving it all, all camp but then now we have you know great race car driver coming in and, and taking the reins we want to give him a well-oiled machine and I think we're in a good position to do that he's the guy that calls the shots I know we're gonna have a have a great game I love that analogy um. <laughs> I'm kind of stealing it from Teddy I, I overheard it 
I mean, you guys are a group, so I'm just going to take it as you guys. <laughs> added One analogy. There we go. <laughs> well, moving on to the Browns defense, because last year, you know, there was a lot of talk about how their defensive line was their weak spot. And Miles Garrett was double teamed more than anybody else in the league, and he still managed to get 16 sacks in 2022. What makes him so powerful, so good? Well, I think he's the freakiest athletic uh, D lineman in the league. And, you know, I I would never say the Browns D line has been a weakness since he's been there. I think that, you know, they're, they're a formidable group and they brought in a bunch of really talented players too. So across the board, I think they're really strong. It's going to be a big challenge for us. Um, but, you know, that's why we're practicing. I think we have a good group and, you know, we just have to go out there and win um, our individual battles and then as a team. I mean, you mentioned they brought in a lot of guys at area Smith, Tomlinson, Ogbo. I mean, it almost seems like they're bringing in talent to try to create one-on-one matchups for Garrett in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you want to do when you have a when you have an elite player like that. You're going to scheme him up, try to get him in those positions. So it's up to us to win our one-on-ones and, um, you know, everyone's got to do their job, you know. Like, as long as we're all doing our job, we're going to be fine. And um, so I'm looking forward to the challenge this weekend.